Hello, welcome to another video. This one is um, a rules review on uh, a set of rules, uh, a set of World War II rules I've come across quite recently, um, All Hell Let Loose. Uh, they're by a guy called David uh, Wasilewski. Wasilewski, I hope I've pronounced that right. I'm sure someone will correct us if I, if I haven't. Um, World War II set designed primarily for six mil, probably use them for 10 mil. Um, how I come across them, the, um, they've been adapted by Charles Roundtree uh, in the UK for um, his Im Jim River game, which has been going around the shows. If you've attended any of the shows in the UK, no doubt you've seen the game. Beautiful uh, terrain, um, and he's adapted those. Uh, so um, I downloaded a set from uh, War Games Vault, uh, and I'm I'm really impressed with them. Um, Gone very much for uh, playability um, as well as the accuracy, getting uh, obviously trying to get the sweet spot, which is for me is the important thing. Um, I think he's done quite a good job. Um, so, what we'll do now is we'll go uh, down to the desk uh, and have a look at them. Right, so uh, all hell let loose uh, six millimeter World War II wargaming rules. Um, downloaded them as I mentioned on from Wargames Vault. I've just shoved them in a, these are the sort of binders I use for any downloading rules. Um, <clears throat> basically, a quick introduction. Um, the way he's done it, he has um, a unit, uh, which is an individual base, be that a tank, uh, uh, a vehicle, or um, an infantry unit. Um, it's quite scale sort of agnostic, so there's nothing set, so it could represent a squad, it could represent a platoon. Um, these units are then made into formations, um, so you can have infantry formations, mechanized formations, armored formations, um, and that is what you're activating. So you're activating that formation. Um, normally, they're around about twelve bases, uh, which we'll mention later on. There's some uh, um, uh, sort of army lists at the back, generic army lists, um, and that'll become apparent when we uh, when we go over that. Um, <clears throat> formation quality so you've got an experienced regular and veteran obviously you get advantages various advantages um there's quite nice little system uh with formation markers which is basically using discs when you can have dummies um and, and once they get in within spotting distance or within a certain distance you deploy the units on the table so a little bit um a little bit fog of war um the way it works you're activating formations so uh if for example you decided to have um a, a base of infantry representing a section um you might have what your formation would then be as a company so if you did a battalion uh if you had a battalion as an organization obviously your companies would be the formations um and the units would be um obviously sections so you'd probably be looking at maybe I don't know, four units of sort of 12 bases and that would give you uh sort of quite a lot of uh, variety and what have you and, and ability to do things um each of these formations um has a dice obviously the dice are different colors for the opposition um all of the day and you have one dice for each formation so if you had four formations you have four dice if the op opposition had five formations they'd have five of a different color chuck them in a bag randomly drawn that's the units that activate that's the formation that's activated that's basically how it works um there are some options to do alternative um activating systems um it's all sort of sort of good stuff when they're activated you do a dice rule depending on the quality of them it lets you um, do various things depending on how you score. Um, going from retiring, um, which is obviously basically a no activation, a partial activation, a single activation, or a double activation. Um, and then you've got the sort of the different actions you can do, whether you're going to move, uh, assault, uh, rally, um, fire. Uh, and obviously you've, they're activated. That the units in the formations are activated individually. There's a resilience disorder. Um, Basically, as units get uh, hit, they take um, uh, disorder markers, and they all have a, a resilience factor, an experience of three, regular or four, veteran or five. These add up. Once they've, once you you hit the um, the maximum, that unit effectively is removed. It's become ineffective. Um, so that's the way he's done that, which is which is quite nice. Standard movement stuff. So for different different terrain, 
uh, normal war gamers will be sort of fully aware of that i'm not going to go into that in any any great detail um uh, line of sight um again normal stuff but there's some nice little twists with it um each formation's also got a forward observer so they represent maybe a couple of officers and ceos in a jeep or something like that um so they can call in um uh, your support fire um <clears throat> little section on line of sight uh firing is um fairly straightforward um <clears throat> There's a, a target's got to be within range and line of sight. Um, you can't fire if you're disordered. Um, that's basically if you've got one or more disorder counters. Um, uh, and then you've got your yeah, indirect fire, which is what the um, the uh, four observers used for. Weapon ranges are given at the table in the back. Basically, the first third of the range um, is short range, middle third's medium, last third's long range um so you know obviously you weapon with a 24 inch maximum range you're looking at eight inch bands so in up to eight inches short range um over eight to uh 16 is long uh is medium rather and obviously over 16 up to 24 is long um and you get bonuses and and, and penalties uh penalties for that um nice thing about the indirect fire which i thought was quite nice is you're not killing loads of troops it's basically causing lots of suppression which allows you to uh, you know uh, suppress the enemy that's quite an interesting way of doing it um rallying allows you as an action to get rid of your yeah, suppression markers um section on um indirect fire smoke and aircraft uh, done fairly um sort of straightforwardly as you'd expect <clears throat> and it's um not overly complicated which which i think is always a good thing when a lot of rule systems specifically with sort of indirect fire and aircraft it become very very complicated uh working it out and this is quite uh quite straightforward um little section on engineers minefields and bridges and then basically you're coming on to the um the army list so there's basically about 34 pages of rules <clears throat> in the book he's basically supplied there's only late war army lists so um uh, 44 to 45 british american uh, german and soviet um as an example this is a, a a british infantry formation a core formation um so what it's basically suggesting and these are only guidelines you don't have to follow them is that the formation has got 12 units in that doesn't include the hq or or an fo the the hq basically acts as a rallying point for the unit and they've got to be within a certain distance of it uh, it doesn't perform much more of a role than that um so as, as as it says here one hq six to twelve infantry units uh up to one mortar up to one heavy machine gun up to one six pound anti-tank gun and then you've got options for um artillery anti-tank anti-aircraft armor uh reconnaissance units and what have you so there's a call list uh for an infantry formation call list for an armored formation uh and a british artillery formation you then go into the the germans it's all basically um standard stuff <clears throat> what it's designed for really is uh for you to sort you know sort the organization out yourself which i'm quite happy with um but all in all um quite a clever little system these are um these are the stat sheets at the um at the back um be fairly straightforward if you wanted to do early war mid war to just do some alteration to some of the stats nothing nothing overly complicated uh in doing that um but um uh as i say quite impressed with it again with wargamers vault if you're happy to do a pdf um really cheap way of doing it uh get it instantly um so really really recommend it right so there we have all hell let loose um like them uh had a couple of small games just using the table we're still in the uh sort of an update on the war games uh the war games room for the back garden that's um i just had actually had a phone call today saying that they're expecting the delivery of the uh units fairly imminently so i'll be off on saturday to pay the balance for that and then hopefully within a couple of weeks they'll be starting um Start the construction fairly straightforward they're doing the foundations first and obviously um getting that up hopefully in a couple of days and then there'll be um an electric fix to do um and then we'll start looking at furniture and getting stuff in uh so all all good on that front so <clears throat> the rules all hell let loose um 
one of my interests uh, sort of late voice from front hungry sort of 45 and that's what we'll be using uh, the rules for um there's obviously lots of choice out there running from spearhead and all sorts of, and you've just got to sort of pay your money i think and uh and make a choice um for me, I think it's it's getting the balance. You can get a lot of systems that can be very complicated, and I sometimes think you can lose the the enjoyment and the playability when they become too complicated. So I was quite taken with this set, uh, and I think it should work. Um, they should work quite nicely. Um, figures wise, I'm using <coughs> six mil stuff. Um, no, I've had it for a while. GHQ, um, which is just beautiful. Um, However, the only problem you have with GHQ now is the um, is the dollar price. The last time I looked, um, I think you're looking at uh, about fourteen pounds for a pack of five vehicles. Uh, obviously, six mil, so one two hundred um, eighty fifth scale. They are lovely. There's no dispute, and they're lovely, lovely models. Um, it just becomes horrifically expensive. Um, I looked at a pack. I think I may have mentioned before. I looked at a pack. They do a pack of um, I wanted a Berg Panther recovery vehicle. Um, so GHQ do on beautiful, beautiful model. Um, there's two in the pack for £14. So you're basically paying £7 for um, a six mil Berg Panther, which is a bit of a, uh, a bit of a bite, to be honest. Um, have a look on eBay. I'll keep viewing eBay uh, regularly in case any hit one of the second hand ones. Um, that they want to get on alternatively if you've got a spare one i'd certainly be willing to buy one for a reasonable price so if anyone's watching this and they've got a spare ghq berg panther um or any soviet ghq late war um german ghq stuff they want to get shot of definitely send us a message i'd be interested um on that uh side actually um uh charles roundry when i spoke to him at york I uh, mentioned a company called 2D6 Wargaming, which is in the UK, and they do um, a range of 1 285th um, World War II vehicles uh, and troops. I've got some samples. Uh, I think I'll maybe do a little video on them. Uh, I'm extremely impressed. They're very, very nice. Um, <laughs> to put into contact, they do a, an early Berg Panther, which was without the spade on the back and with the sort of... The, the turret um, aperture, the, the turret ring aperture sort of boarded over, so it's an early Berg Panther. Um, that's 120 compared to £7 for the GHQ one. Um, so it'll be nice to do a, a bit of a comparison, but we'll maybe look at that um, over the next few uh, the next few days. Um, so that's it. Um, if you enjoyed the video, um, please like it. If you're not already a subscriber, have a think about subscribing. You can do that from the main channel page, alternatively at the end of the video. In the bottom right-hand corner, there's a button which is an Empress 28mm Modern British Infantryman. You can click on that and you'll be subscribed. Um, so what's up next? Um, <clears throat> obviously, the War Games rooms looking extremely imminent, so we might be tied up with that. Um, I am aware that there's quite a number of people asked us about the 28mm modern British and Afghans that I've got. We will have to get round to doing um, a showcase video on those. That's uh, definitely, uh, will definitely be coming up soon. Um, as normal, any questions, any queries, give us a shout uh, and we'll do our best to answer them. Uh, that's about it. So we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.